Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, I'll be reviewing one of the new Formula Wheels in Cube Control's latest edition of their Formula Wheel lineup, the Formula Sport. Now, I did a review on their Pro Formula Wheel is around a year ago. Time to put this new design through the SRG's review process and see what the guys at Cube Controls have been up to. So, let's get to it. Now for our Closer Look segment on the Formula Sport wheel from the guys at Cube Controls. Now, they have three different versions of their Formula wheels. This is the entry level or the lowest cost. That's why I call it the entry level wheel. It's the Sport. And I have a shot of them here. And you, they also offer the Pro, which has some clutches and lit buttons on it. And then they have their top of the line CSX2, which has the LED screen and also lit buttons and things like that. But we'll be focused on the Sport on this review. Now, first off, I did a review on a Coupe Control Formula One wheel quite a while back, and it had red grips on it, and I believe it was their first one that they made. And you can actually go back and look in the library and see that. But I'm going to show you a picture of it as I'm examining some of the differences on this wheel compared to the original one. Right, the first thing we notice here is this big carbon plate. And of course, it's all one piece carbon, I do believe, that goes all the way through here. And these little spokes here are all connected in that plate. And it is a four millimeter thick plate on here. Very well done carbon fiber, nice layup here. No defects seen anywhere in the carbon weave. And again, at these price points, you would expect this kind of finish. And also, when we have the grip or have this in hand and gripping it, it feels pretty stiff. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of that original one that I did and, and look at some examples of the difference. The reason I'm pointing this out is I actually got a comment or two on my video that the original Formula One, some guys weren't happy. They felt it was too flexy in the bottom part. And that's the bottom part right here. All right. And you can see it's kind of a small, it's only eight millimeters wide here, right? So we're four millimeter thick and eight millimeters wide. Now, if you look at the picture of the original one down that same area, you'll see there is no screw next to the grip. And I'm going to come back to this wheel and show you the difference. Here, we actually have a screw, right? Right here. And we also have one further up on the upper middle spoke right there. And then on the top spoke, we have a, actually have one in there. It's hard. It's very close to the grip right there. All right. So these are clamping down into the aluminum plate on the back. And you can see there's actually a piece that's actually protruding right here. And also down in here, shifter's kind of hiding it a little bit, but there's a piece there. And there's also a piece right here that's protruding from the main housing, this aluminum housing on the back. And that's all, those are actually drilled and tapped for the screws that go in there. All right. So this is going to add a stiffness or a, a rigid element to this wheel. And it feels pretty, pretty stiff, actually. I, don't, I can't really sense flex at this. You know, we do have urethane grip, so there is a little bit of flex in those which is a good thing. And yeah, I can't really feel any flex here. But of course, the litmus test is going to be when this is mounted or hard mounted to one of my direct drive wheelbases and we're actually driving it, then we'll tell for sure. But just based on the previous one, I'll show you another shot of it again. And this one, then yeah, the screws here are definitely going to be a factor in increasing the stiffness that we see here. Right. So let's talk about the grip itself. It's a proprietary technology they're saying on their website for the these urethane I'm, I'm guessing these are urethane uh, injection molded grips and we can see the injection molded from the molds there you can see the well there we go part right there and over here all right that's typical when you see an injection molded piece they have a they're not real slick they don't have much of a grain to them i don't know how well that's going to show up but they do have I wouldn't say a tacky feel, but it's not a slick feel kind of in between. But it feels like you could actually drive this with just bare hands and have plenty of grip on it. And I, when I'm driving it, I'll probably make a comment when I have the gloves on when I'm driving it, how that feels. But yeah, I like the way these grips feel. They're, they fill up the palm of your hand very well, right in this section, the web in here, with the way this grip is, is shaped. You can see how wide it looks from that angle. And then if we flip it around front, you can see how thin it is that way. Typical of the formula type wheels. And this is actually, I'm going to hit a measure the circumference around this part of it right in here. All right, because that's where you're really going to be, the command part of your hand's going to be 
gripping it, when you're pushing it, and when you're turning. So this is actually came out to 115 millimeters. Show a shot of it right there. And yeah, so that's pretty good. I had a, I still have an FS1 wheel, and they has a, that has the same kind of grip, the thin this way, but wide this way, but it's really wide. And it's, it's, it's a point to where I just never came to terms with that grip as being comfortable for me. And of course, different people have different thoughts on that. So again, it's a subjective thing, but this one feels more contoured to what I would like. And you see, we, speaking of contours, you can see the contour shape here. It's very deep right in the back there. So we can actually get our fingers wrapped around and clamping on these flat parts here, which gives you a good feel. You know, I got no complaints about this grip. It feels pretty good. In fact, I think it feels better than the other grip that I had, those red grips that were on the original one. This feels a little bit deeper, I think. So, yeah, no complaints on the grips. Looking good there. So let's move on to what's going on in front as far as the buttons. So we have 13 total buttons. And the way they've arranged it here is we have six on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have seven on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And with the, the difference being this yellow button here, and we have a joystick on this side, right? Now the buttons themselves have a nice, you can hear that click. They have a nice audible click to them and a tactile feel. The springs are not real heavy, so you don't have to press too hard. It is it, but not too light either. You do have to put some effort into it to make it work. But yeah, and again, this is all subjective. Some people may like this, some may not. Now these are not lit buttons. They are, in other words, there's no LEDs behind them like on the other two wheels that are offered in the Formula series from Cube Controls. Now, again, they have these shrouds here. See how these shrouds are set up around these buttons? We have a flat one here, and then we have this protruding up here, and we have one up here on the thumb when it's pretty deep, and we also have one up here. All right, so the shrouds are they able to, rather they enable you to easily locate which button you're on. I have two flat ones here, this has a shroud, that does, that does, that does. So anytime I'm using this, I'm going to use this as an example of this side. If I got to move my thumb up to, to this button here, I can feel which one it is just by that ridge, my, butt, my thumb catching the ridge right there that's around that, right? And then there's no ridge on this one, so I know which button that is. So this, would be, this is a good wheel for VR. If you're, obviously, we can't see our steering wheel when we've got the hood on. And so it'll be easier for your muscle memory to find these. Plus, you don't go too far you know where that button is because if it's hitting this ridge when your thumb's sliding over to get to the button, first I know I got this one here because I know the reach of it and it's, there is no ridge. This one has the ridge. So I know the difference between B and E right away just from feel. And it really helps you do that with this type of button shroud system, right? So I kind of like that, the way they do that. And I'm not sure what the material is they're using here for these. Some kind of a plastic. Uh, it looks like it's injected molded though. It doesn't look like it's 3D printed, right? All right, so we have a seven-way switch, which I love these seven-way switches. I mean, who wouldn't? Because we have seven moves in one position right there. So we have the press, which is very tactile, and we have the dial or the encoder either way. And the encoder in detents on this are very good. You can easily find one detent. It doesn't go too far and you hit two accidentally. You can, yeah, there's no way I would actually overshoot this, I think. So it's easy to feel, and it's got a good tactile feel on these detents that are in this switch. And of course we can also move it left, right, up and down. So we have a total of seven different possible functions right here. I wish that we had another one over there where this yellow button is E. But there might be some you know issues with that as far as the types of electronics, the chips they're running and that kind of thing. But yeah, 14 moves in just two spots would be very cool. And especially under VR that helps a lot too. But it is what it is. We finally get one of them on this wheel. Anything else we want to talk about? Oh, yes, here's the encoders. And they are also have a great feel to them. They don't feel loose. The shafts are tight. Again, at this price point, I would expect nothing less. And I'm not sure if these are aluminum or plastic. Sometimes it's hard to tell when the plastic is really hard. And some of the coatings that they can put on aluminum now almost makes them look plastic. But and when we do a, a look inside, I'll probably pull these off and take a look at them. So yeah, but they have a good feel to them. No complaints there. 
they don't really stand out either but the de in the detents are very pronounced so you can feel exactly what you're doing if you've went one click or you go two clicks or three clicks or whatever that you're going for right so we also had a couple of rockers up here and these rockers are actually do have leds in them so these are red led rings around these rockers so when you plug it in you will see that and the it, the led comes on when you turn the switch down when you turn it up it goes off so it's another visual indicator whether it's on or off. And as you can see, we've got stickers or decals all over this. And they're kind of a glossy decal. And the thing about decals is they look great, but usually if you have one button that you use all the time, it'll start wearing. And then your decal gets a little duller. And you know, it just, it is what it is with decals, right? But not to worry because speaking of the decals, you get a decal sheet. And I mean, you get a decal sheet. <laughs> this is, I mean, look at all this stuff on here. <laughs> when I first saw it, I said, oh my God, I said, you know, there's so much stuff on here that, uh, yeah, if you can't find what you need on this sheet, as far as your controls on your steering wheel, you probably don't need it, I would imagine. So, of course, we've got the logo stuff on the bottom here. But yeah, look at all this stuff. It's, uh, and it's colorful. It's very nice. And, and, this actually is a value add to the price on this wheel that you get something like this. And, you know, again, it, obviously if they're printing a thousand of these out, it doesn't cost that much per sheet, but still they went to the extra effort to do this. So they let the, the buyer who owns their wheel do whatever they want to. And if you don't like this sticker, or if, if one of these decals is wearing on you, you can get another one off of here and put it on and replace it. So that cures that problem, I would say. All right. So yeah, so there's the decals. Now what's we want to talk about? I think it's everything we want to talk about on the front. Let's go ahead and get around to the back. First thing we'll talk about is the shifters. And yeah, I've always liked the cube control shifters. It's just one of those shifters you get. And of course, again, this is subjective. You may or may not like their shifters, but yeah, they just have a nice short throw to them, but very, very tactile on the click. I mean, there's no question you made the shift when you, when you actually pull this shifter really does a, a good job as far as that's concerned at least to me it does and of course they're magnetic and they're hall effect type and they call them contactless switches all right so kind of a hall effect thing i would imagine using magnetic field to tell a sensor that it's moved and the cool thing about this is of course we can see these gold magnets back here but i'm going to try to show you this not it's not going to be easy but the way they've got this this thing set up let's see how close i can get that so you guys can see it there we go. I think you see it there. It's a cylinder shaped magnet in the sensor. That white plastic piece you see in there is the sensor that's in the center of it. So the magnet is attracted by the outer ring of that cylinder and the sensor is inside. And of course there's a magnetic field circuit in there that's judging how strong that magnetic field is. And yeah, it's just an off and on function because it's just a shifter, right? It's not like a clutch. It doesn't, we don't have to know the exact distance the way it is. Well, we do, but it's pre-programmed in so it knows what, when it's pulled away to actually make the move so a switch is activated. But yeah, very cool design in there. I didn't notice that on the other one. I'm, I'm not sure if I looked good enough, but yeah, when I saw that, I was, yeah, I said, that's pretty cool the way they've done that. Right. And while we're looking at it, you can see the nice carbon fiber side panels done here with some grooves in them. And the grooves, of course, are for adjustability. So we can take this thing and swing it out if we want it's all the way in now as you can see based on the, the the length of the groove over here and we have a little bit of groove there for pivoting so yeah we can actually swing this further out if this is too close for your fingers when you're shifting then i can swing this thing out and make the reach longer if i wanted to but it's pretty good from what i from what i like so far then again once it's on the the, the actual wheelbase and i'm using it i might change my mind but then again nice to have adjustability in there right now the panels themselves, of course, carbon fiber units, and they are four millimeters thick. So this is a hefty paddle here. And you know, when I first saw the adjustment slots in here and how long they were, I, I was going, mm, that's, that's, that's a long way to be cutting a lot of grooves in that. But we're dealing with four millimeter thick paddle here. Unlike some wheels that, you know, you know I've, I've always thought a little side, let me go off to the side here a little bit, that minimum is three millimeters on a paddle for a good durable carbon fiber paddle. Aluminum, you probably go a little thinner. But yeah, three millimeters. And these are four millimeters. A good example of that is the APM modules um, that Fanatic uses, and they have a two millimeter shifter paddle for their setup. 
So two millimeters is a little bit on the thin side, in my opinion. I'm sure it works well. I mean, I've, I've never had a problem with one, but then when they do counter bores and things like that in it and take more material away from already thin two millimeter, it does concern me. But yeah, we'll just have to wait and see if there's any failures on those on the forums. But this four millimeter, it gives me a lot more confidence to be when I see slots like that cut into it. And of course, the further we move this paddle in, the less stress it's going to be on the end of the paddle there. I might move these in a little bit because where my fingers are, when I'm driving it, is I could come out a bit. You know, I could be out like hit this. So I might move those in a bit once I'm actually in the car shifting. But we'll have to wait and see how that ends up. Right. So, yeah, that's, that's it for the shifters. Now, we also have this nice hub on here. This is aluminum, anodized aluminum. And, yeah, it's got a nice design to it. Again, little things like this are what we should be seeing in a wheel in this price range. And Cube Control does a good design, I think, or rather a good job with their designs, aesthetically speaking. They do a good job. And, yeah, so we've got two sets of holes in here. Two different PCDs. We've got the outer ones, which are 70 millimeter going around the outer this way. And we have these internal ones here, and these are 50.8 or 50, a lot of people call them. But yeah, or 51. So yeah. And the cool thing about this is they've, they've actually done two different types of holes here. Well, not holes, but they threaded some and not threaded the others. I'm going to use these right here as an example. See, these have actually been tapped for threads. All right. But the set right next to it up here is not. So you can actually get a, an M5 through there without any threads and then put a nut on the other side. And the reason for this is there's different types of wheel side quick release mounts that we're going to be dealing with. And this is a good example of that. This is an HRS and this is a 70 millimeter and we also have a 50 millimeter. HRS actually taps and threads their holes. See that there? You can see the threads in there right so the only problem with that usually it's not a problem because we just you know screw it directly into a, a hole with a nut on the back of it and you're good to go but when you have threads on it like this or if you're going from the other side you can just screw through the hole a, a hole with no threads and screw directly into it and attach it that way but if you're trying to go from threaded hole here into another threaded hole if i had this threaded hole lined up with this threaded hole it's likely going to be a problem when the screw comes out this side of the flange and starts to go in that hole, it's not going to match up. because And you can't adjust it either as far as the distance to get the thread to match up to this thread. So this can cause a problem of, of being able to screw it all the way on. And really the only thing to cure that would be a captive type of bolt or screw. And a captive is the section that is next to the head of the bolt or the screw is smooth and then the threads are introduced at the end of it so that you can thread it through this and then it'll be loose so we can turn it as much as we want and then we could go ahead and thread it in there and then it would pull it tight but captive screws are expensive so anyway so you can still thread your your screw through this and then i would just put it on one of the hot the holes that don't have threads here see the contrast is a little bit difficult to show here and then put a nut on the other side done deal just tighten it up you're done so that's probably how i'm going to end up doing this if i use these and i'm probably going to use these right so just a note of the design there. And inside of here, we actually have a plug. See this plug hiding down inside of there. And I'm told this is for, they're going to be coming out with their own quick release system. And this is going to have some kind of function in that quick release. So we're just going to have to wait and see how that works out. But meanwhile, we just keep it tucked in there. It's out of the way. And you can see the circuit board down in there. And yeah, just go ahead and mount and don't worry about it. Okay. So yeah. That's how we're going to mount it to the hub. We also have the, before I get to the USB plug, I'm going to show you some other things. The, the housing on this is very nice. It's typical of Cube Controls. They do very good work here. And again, at these price points, we would expect to see nothing less, I imagine. So yeah, nice done aluminum here. And it's probably got some nice milled out pieces inside. And we'll, we'll check that out once we do look inside. But you can see how that, this camfering goes all the way around the whole plate. Very nice and around the top there. So we also noticed that there is some carbon fiber bits in here. We got some here, right here. And we also have some on the sides. See right there, these carbon little inserts in here. And what I'm just assuming here, because I don't have another one in my hand, but I'm pretty sure that they're using the same back plate, this housing here, for both the Sport and the Pro. 
not for the CSX2 because that's got a big LED in it or screen or display in it. So that's going to be shaped a little bit, a little bit differently, I would imagine. So what they're doing is, is you would have, this would actually be for a, some kind of a rotary, a dual clutch, perhaps you'd have, this actually might be the dual clutch mounts right in here. And again, carbon fiber plate there and there that's screwed in. So they can put their clutch handles here and any electronics they need to out here as far as uh, the clutch adjustment and then maybe some rotaries here and on the other side for that carbon fiber plate and the other side we only have one see it up here so that would send to i would think that's where these rotaries would go right and the reason we only have two we have rather we have two on this side is because this is where the rotary would go or the knob would go to adjust the the bite point for our clutches if they were mounted right but we don't have clutches on this so that's why i don't see it and we don't have the knobs the rotary knobs up here as again, this is their entry level unit. Right, back to the USB. I like the way they do these. It, you know, it's got a cool color to it, and the, you know, it is plastic, but having a screw on there to cover up your USB, you can see the pins of it in there, is never a bad idea. And you can see that this actually has some keyed pieces or tabs in there. See those tabs going around the, circum the circumference there? And that's because they're keyed to this guy over here which is the USB cable itself. Again, a very nicely done unit. It has this matte finish to it, but it's very rubbery. And yeah, I like it. You know, it's one of those things, you pick up a good quality cable in your hands, you know it right away if you are used to handling cables. You've got the end here that obviously is gonna go into the USB piece over there. And you can see it has corresponding slots around the perimeter of that plug that are gonna match up to what we just saw over there. And of course we have USB A type connector over here as usual. And only thing is no ferrite core. Okay, maybe I'm, I'd like to see a ferrite core on there, if, if anything. <laughs> gotta find something to, to gripe about, right? And yeah, it's got good flexibility to it. It's just, again, a very high quality cable. As soon as you put it in your hand, you, you know right away that it's a nice cable. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and plug this in. Remember, we have these slots here that we're gonna have to make sure that everything matches up. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm looking at the pattern and then I'm looking at the pattern over here and I can see it's kind of a triangle with two smaller ones on the bottom. And I'll let you're going to see that. And then one bigger one on the top. So I can see that pattern in here and just go ahead and plug it in. Hopefully, there it goes. Right, so we got it plugged in and it's a matter of tightening our little ring down and we're done. Now I like the way they've angled this. Now the original wheel that I got, or actually the GT also, had the USB coming straight out of the bottom down here, right? Which is okay, but it, you know, it, it can get in the way of your legs or something if you're real close to the wheel, especially on the GT wheel because it's, it's a larger diameter. And well, anyway, I made some comments about that, I believe, on the reviews before. And it's good to see that they've made some changes there. Again, just like the screw reinforcements on the front of the thing we talked uh, plate we talked about initially, this is actually angled down. See how that angles out of the way of the hub connector there, the flange on the hub. So it angles down just missing it, right? But still coming out the back. So when we're using this as our racing wheel, there's nothing hanging down here. Or it's up our cord, obviously. But I usually take the cord and wrap it around one time at least on the shaft of the motor that I'm using for driving. So yeah, again, a nice little add there, the way they've tucked that down or angled that down to tuck this out of the way of our flange and no interference with legs or anything passing underneath either. So yeah, I guess that's about it for the closer look. We do have some nice silk screen in there, right? Cube controls. And again, it's a very professional looking wheel when you have it in hand. I don't have the other, the one I originally reviewed with me. I sent that one back, it was a loaner. But yeah, this feels, I don't know, it just, I kind of think that it feels a little bit different. It, and I know the grips are different and they feel good so far. So again, once I'm driving with it for a few hours, then I'll be able to tell even better. But so far, it's, it looks like a very promising wheel to be using. And yeah, not much else to see here. And what we'll do next is go ahead and take a peek in, in our look inside segment. Again, it's probably just the usual full diameter custom circuit board that Cube Controls uses on their wheels. But we'll just see if we can open this up and take a peek at that. And we'll do that next. So here's our look inside segment. I'm gonna be very careful how I do this. I couldn't get them completely separated. And the reason is, let me gently take this out. Did you see this shifter plug right there on the board? 
So I'm going to rotate this around very gently so you can see it. So it didn't want to come off that plug. And if it doesn't come off kind of easily, even with some of the tricks I have for getting plugs off, then I usually just leave them alone. And because, yeah, it, their surface soldered or soldered right through the circuit board down there, and the actual header for the plug and it's pretty tight in there, so I didn't want to pull it off and maybe pull the, the header off too. So then I have to solder it back on, and big problems. So anyway, but it lets us see enough of this, I think, of the circuit board, just to show you the typical top of the line, you know, circuit board here done by Cube Controls. And yeah, just to, again, I just like to show you guys the type of circuit boards that these guys are doing. Very professional. Again, you won't find anything better than this, I think, in any other type of circuit boards. The housing itself is a nice alumed, uh, rather not alumed, but aluminum machine piece. And it's all milled out. It looks like it was a single piece of aluminum. And you can see we have three bolts attaching our hub in there. And on the sides of this, you can see again those carbon fiber plates that they're using to plug up the places where a rotary dial goes and our probably the clutch, some kind of clutch mechanism goes there. So there we have it. You can see there's still some uh, sheening marks in there around the hub part, which I like to see that. Nice anodization job done throughout. Again, top of the line professional work here. Yeah, you can't ask for anything more than what I'm seeing here when I pull something like this apart. So yeah, this is a quick look inside. Seven. They even put a, the one that they sent to me, it's even got SRG on the little label down there. <laughs> and it says formula steering wheel version 2.0, Cube Controls 2019. I see some writing down there. But again, very nicely executed, very tidy, very neat, very professional. Right, so all I gotta do now is put this back together. And before I leave the look inside, when I was taking this off, I pulled these knobs off, and these are for the encoders right here. And actually these are not, I thought these were aluminum, but they're not. They're some kind of a plastic urethane or something. Very tough and stiff feeling urethane plastic. And you can see they're kind of keyed in there for the flat spots on these little post here that these encoder rotaries are attached to. And you can see the same thing in there. I got a little piece of extra stuff on there. All right, pretty simple stuff, and they just push on, pull off. You have to be very careful when you pull these off. I use a tool like this to do those kind of actions just to make sure I don't mess anything up. And if it doesn't come off easily, then I'll stop. But these came off pretty easy, and I'm sure they'll go back on pretty snug also. All right, so there we have it, the look inside segment. Brief, but yeah, I like to show you guys what's going on inside whenever I get the chance, and I did on this, so there we have it. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and get our quick release. Our, I'm not sure which one of these I'm going to use, the 50.8 or the 70 mil, but yeah, I'm going to put one of these on, and then we're going to mount it over there to my SIM Steering 2 Bodner system, and when we come back, we'll have it all mounted up and see what that looks like. The... HRS quick release adapter is now mounted. And remember when the closer look, I discussed with you guys the possible issue of these threaded, where's the threaded hole? Let me show you one there. There we go. The threaded holes that are in this, there we go, right there. And could interfere with us bolting this together because of the threaded holes that the HRS wheel side adapters have in them as you can see right there right because when the thread goes through this and remember there's a thread in that flange so i'm threading it through the chances of it hitting this flange and engaging the threads in those holes properly so that it'll keep screwing in usually are not very good but look at this all three of them <laughs> and they're they're, and they came out about the, the right length, too. I did put a couple of washers in them, but I, I do the washers mainly because I don't want to mar things up in a washer. And you'll see I have two of them in there because when I do my washers, washers typically have a smooth side and a rough biting side. And I'll usually take the smooth side and put it up against the head here of the bolt and then put another one on with the smooth side facing the mounting surface itself. So when I clamp down on it, it's less likely to mar it up. So when I take it out, it doesn't look terrible, right? It's all scratched up where you first bolt something up. And sometimes you just can't avoid it, but I try to do that just for the heck of it. Anyway, so we are going to 
except our good fortune here that all three of these went in and I was able to torque them down properly. So yeah, uh, again, I'm very surprised to see that and I want to show you guys that. Otherwise, yeah, we've run, we were using the 50.8 millimeter patterned or PCD adapter. I decided to go ahead and go with the little one so I can still see all that cool stuff going around with the hub when it's mounted. Just the aesthetic move that I made because I was able to. If I only had this, then obviously I would have that on there and it'd be covering up a lot of that. But anyway, so we're good to go now. It's just a matter of getting our cable back on. And when we come back, we'll have it mounted up the wheel and see what that looks like. So now we have the wheel mounted and we're using the HRS quick release system. And you can see how that USB connector really works well now as far as not being coming out of the very bottom of this wheel case and coming out on the back. And of course that angle they have on it clears the hub mount flange quite nicely, I think. Yes, yeah, looking good. Let's go around and take a look at the other side. And I think it's a handsome looking wheel sitting up here. And the grips, like I said, I've, I've actually tried it a little bit and I'm pretty pleased with the grips at this point, but I haven't done any really long sessions or stints yet, but that will be coming up in the future. And of course, we'll be testing it on the 54G Cole Morgan servo motor in the Bodner SS2 system that I run for heavy duty testing like this. So yeah, looking good. And all we gotta, gotta do now is get in and drive it. So here we are in iRacing at Sebring in the Renault Formula 2O car. Thought this was a fitting car to be testing out this wheel in. And yeah, for a Formula centric wheel, it's doing a great job. As you might imagine, it's actually very stiff. I was surprised at the stiffness on it. I, I really can't perceive any flex at all. If there is any flex, it would be in the urethane injection molded grips, I believe. And yeah, so very stiff, as you can see here, it's a very stiffly sprung car to begin with. And I have the force feedback on this Cole Morgan 54G turned all the way up. And yeah, just putting it through the testing. <laughs> like I always like to do here, we're pushing it pretty hard. And as far as the grips themselves, they're very comfortable actually. I, I found that this type of group uh, grip rather suits my my hand pretty well it fills in the web between your forefinger and your thumb and the palm in that area quite well and i'm able to actually push hard for a long time without getting any hand cramps or anything like that so yeah the grips are working great and all the buttons work great too um, of course my favorite is the seven way hat switch and that you can see me using that here switching around from the black screens here or the black boxes and yeah that works like a champ the shifting itself is very crisp, very precise. I really like these shifters. It's right up there on top of my list for good shifters. And I also wanted to run this wheel in the Ferrari 488 GT at Sebring just to get a different feel for how it would feel in like a GT type car. And it being at 282 millimeters as far as the width of this wheel, I think it's suitable for this kind of a car too. It does quite well, you know, again, you can drive it any car with any wheel but then again you know some some wheels just feel a little more natural when you're in the car driving it than others would like an oval in this car so anyway yeah the, the shifters are very good i never missed a shift with them very tactile i like that they are contactless type of shifter and i like the design where they have that sensor inside the hollowed out magnet cylinder that really works a treat here um, everything is bolted down well again the stiffness is very good when uh, as far as the attachment point to this hrs quick release i'm using you know it's just one of those things that it's, it's it's an overall good wheel you know it just does what it's supposed to do it doesn't have any bad habits that i could find and it's just one of those wheels that i would be happy using all the time if this was you know my only wheel or one of my only wheels especially for the gt and of course the f1 type cars so yeah again just can't find any bad habits here everything just working like it should it's just one of those things that gets out of your way while you're racing and pushing hard and just lets you do your job, which is to hopefully go fast. <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is, yeah, just get on to the final thoughts next. Final thoughts on the Formula Sport wheel from the guys at Cube Controls. You know, back in February 2019, I did a review on Cube Controls' first Formula wheel offering. It was their high-end wheel at that time. The Sport Wheel is an entry-level wheel of the three different models that they offer now. So, no clutches or lit buttons except for the toggles on this particular unit. 
but it does come with all the latest design changes. I like the way Cube has increased the stiffness of their wheel by adding six more mounting points to the rather nice looking front carbon fiber plate. The new grips on this wheel offer a shape that is deeper than they are wide, and I thought them to be very comfortable when I was using it. And the new injection grip material can be used with or without gloves. I used it with gloves during my testing sessions and never had any issue with slipping. The 13 buttons on this wheel give a decent tactile feel when they are pressed, and the angled button shields give you that extra tactile guidance to your intended button. A plus for VR racers too. The seven-way joystick is a treat to use and has a nice texture to it. I only wish that there were two of them instead of one. <laughs> but I always say that anytime I review a wheel with only one seven-way switch. The front rotaries give a good sense of feel, nicely spaced detents, make it easy to turn and not overshoot your intended setting. The aluminum housing in the rear is nicely machined and finished. The circuit board inside is a very professional looking unit keeping with what I have seen thus far when testing any wheel from Cube Controls. The carbon and aluminum shifters have a good range of adjustability for an F1 styled wheel, and being switchless in design should give a rather long life cycle, I think. They also are a pleasure to use, giving you a nice crisp tactile click when activated. I like the design of the hub that you use for mounting allowing you to use either a 70mm or 50.8mm quick release adapter. Not really anything that I didn't like about this wheel, it really has no bad habits that I could find and seems to be one that is built well enough to last a long time. I'm Barry Rowland, thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.